Welcome to Our Hope, a production of Chosen People Ministries. On this podcast, you will hear inspiring testimonies, learn about messianic apologetics, and discover God's plan for Israel and you. Wherever you're listening, we hope you lean in, listen closely, and be blessed. In John 15, 26, Jesus said, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. Jesus often spoke of the Spirit, which he would send after returning to the Father. The unprecedented outpouring of God's Spirit on the early church is a prominent theme in the New Testament. Through the Spirit, the believers boldly spread the gospel bravely faced opposition, and even performed miracles such as healing diseases and raising the dead. So what exactly is the relationship between the Messiah and the Spirit? The book of Joel offers us a clue. The prophet Joel speaks of a day when God's Spirit will come upon the whole world. This amazing event is connected to the end times, when the sun will darken and the moon will turn to blood, when God will deliver those who call upon him. On today's episode, our guest Randall, who serves God's chosen people in Israel, will help us understand what Joel says about the messianic outpouring of the Spirit and how it relates to Israel today. I now introduce the host of our Hope Podcast, Abe Vazquez. Welcome back, everyone. This is Abe Vazquez. Again, I'm so excited to be with you all. I'm really excited to jump into this topic, the Messianic outpouring of the Spirit. And we have someone from Israel who is going to talk with us, um, and it's the first time we brought him on this episode. So, Randall, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We're excited to have you. Hey, thanks, Abe. Great to be with you. So, Randall, since this is your first time, you know, we always ask this question for a first-time guest. Um, It's a pretty critical question. So, what is your absolute favorite food? My favorite food. Wow, <laughs> let me think about that. Well, I like Chinese food. And oh, since yeah. we're involved in Jewish stuff, you know, they always <laughs> joke about Chinese food. That that doesn't really work in Israel. So right. <laughs> um, I, I like spicy food. Yeah. You know, I, I was actually born in Texas, so I grew up with jalapeno peppers and, you know. Yeah, so spicy food all the way. That's kind of general, but. Maybe that gets your question. Yeah, I'd love some spicy food. (laughs) Yeah. That is awesome. Well, there's this there's this dish from Yemen called shug. Shug. Mm. And shug, you can actually make it at home. It's hot green bell peppers and cardamom and some other cool stuff. And it's just a great, it's like a it's like a addition to your food. It's like the ketchup Mm. of of Israel. So there you go. The last time I went to Israel, I had some Yemeni food. Yeah, I had some Yemeni food and it was absolutely delicious. <laughs> oh, cool. Cool. It well, was some very, melting very pots. Cool. You get you get stuff from everywhere here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So speaking of Israel, what is your favorite place in Israel? Well, I, you know, we're tour guides, my wife and I. Mm-hmm. So we kind of had to learn places and go and hang out in places. So I have like a kind of serious site but a very mm-hmm. special site in the, um, uh, around the Sea of Galilee, and it's in Magdala. Magdala. Mm. That's where Mary Magdalene was from, and it's a cool old ruined city, and they found there a synagogue that no doubt Jesus taught in. So yeah. here's this like synagogue there. I don't know if you've been. Yeah, um, I have. It's, it's, it's awesome. Well, they, they have this carved stone, this like heavy carved stone that they found there in the synagogue in the middle that they would prop a scroll on. It's like tilted. And somebody carved that stone with symbols from the temple that saw it. There was Mm. somebody that saw the temple. They were eyewitnesses. So they carved a menorah and some other stuff. 
And to me, that's pretty cool. Great. Yeah. Speaking of Israel, we've been keeping an eye on the headlines coming out of Israel. Um, And for any listeners who Mm -hmm. want to hear some news from Israel, you can sign up for our Inside Israel newsletter at chosenpeople.com slash Inside Israel. Just a plug there. Um, But we know that during COVID, Israel has had some ups and downs. I think now things are slowly moving back to normal. So what are some ways you are ministering in Israel as a Delta variant calms down? Well, you know that we uh, uh, chosen, chosen people or Beit Sar Shalom has two centers, one in Jerusalem, one in um, Ramad Gan, the business center and activities, mm, yeah. things are still going on. Um Israel really has not been as chaotic as um, some of our North American friends have experienced. (laughs) So life goes on in many ways. And uh, for instance, um, my wife and I went on Saturdays, we often do to uh, a day center where several of the Messianic congregations pass out food and hang out with people that are drug addicts and prostitutes. Mm. And that's really cool because, you know, when people are kind of down and out, a lot of times they're more more apt to listen, have a great conversation. Another thing we like to do is going to the Shuk. The Shuk Mm. is the Jewish open market in Jerusalem. And when you come, you have to go there. It's Mm. all these shops and, you know, bright colors and people with vegetables and fruit. And we just start conversations. So we got a little bored with kind of trying to wait and see, well, maybe we can turn the conversation, talk about eternal things. So we order our, you know, carrots or whatever. And then we say, hey, by the way, we're messianic, which here means we believe in Jesus. And we even say, Mm -hmm. hey, that means we believe in Jesus. And, you know, it's amazing the conversations you get. It's not like you might expect maybe where you are, your experience, it's just very special here. And people say, yeah, I knew a Messianic guy served within the army or, oh, you're like these other people and I know them. We've had some great talks, great talks. That's awesome. So Randall, before we dive into the main scripture passage, give us a little bit of a backdrop. What can you tell us about this, this section of the Bible that we're gonna talk about, Joel chapter two, verses 28 through 32. Um, but but let's kind of see the big picture. Uh, what's the context of this book and the prophet Joel? When did he live? What was his focus? What other details should we know before we really dive in? Yeah, sure. Uh, good question. And Joel is, is a kind of mysterious figure. Now, the mm. name Joel, Yoel, in Hebrew, it just means like twice God. There's L and then there's Yo, which is short for Yahweh or Jehovah. Um, we don't know when he lived. We don't mm-hmm. know where he was prophesying. And we don't know really his audience other than it was the people of Israel. Um, so a couple of, couple of um, theories there. There are two pre-exilic theories, the exile of the Jewish people from Israel was 586 BC. So there is a theory of very early before that, then just before that. And then there's a theory that, um, that it may have been after the exile. Now the temple was around, that's mentioned. So if it was after the exile, it would have been after the rebuilding of the temple in like 516. Mm-hmm. And his father's name, Petuel, only time mentioned in the Bible. So there we go. That's kind of a kind of a quick background. Well, before we dive into the prophecy, it's important that we read it first. So I'm just going to read real quick the uh, these verses, Joel 2, 28 through 32. It will come about after this that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind, and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on the male and female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will display wonders in the sky and on the earth, blood, fire, and columns of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And it will come about that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be delivered. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be those who escape 
as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. Randall, just for context, you, this season we've been practicing listening to scripture. Um, you know, a lot of times we, we make reference to the scripture, but uh, those who are listening may not have, you know, time to open their Bible or they're on the road or something. Um, and, and so we're just practicing this, this, this act of listening to the word of God. Um, and I, I absolutely love it. I, I would love some of our viewers or listeners to let us know how they, how they are enjoying it. But Randall, I'm, I'm just curious, what is your initial reaction after just hearing this text? I think, I think the first thing I think about is when is this fulfilled? What's, what's it talking about? You know, it anticipates, I know the, I know the answer because we're moving mm -hmm. to Acts 2, you know, we'll be talking about that. I think you have to think, well, what, what comes before this in the prophet Joel? There's, there's this judgment. There's the, um, you know, the, 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 the Jewish people suffered a locust plague. And then there was some kind of uh, army that was, that was marching. So some bad times within a time of repentance. And the, and the famous verse, a lot of people know, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. So it's this time where God's also being really faithful and gracious to Jewish people. And then right after those verses that, that we're, um, you know, that we've listened to, uh, you, you have this multitudes in the Valley of Decision, the day of the Lord and a destruction on some local enemies as well. So these are like, it's very emotive. It's very powerful. It's kind mm. of gripping celestial signs, you know? Right. And if we want to really understand this verse, um, we could definitely look at the face value of the text, but we can go even deeper by looking at the Hebrew, uh, the original Hebrew of this verse. So the Hebrew word in Joel 2.28 that most translations put as spirit is ruach, which can mean spirit, breath, or wind. Randall, how do we know if this passage is referring to the Holy Spirit as we understand it as believers? or if it's referring to something else? Well, it's, it's a good question. And people talk a lot about spirit and wind, and it's important to know breath. Um, if you look at the context of the whole Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, if you look at the um, Hebrew Bible, you see this story and you can go all the way back to Genesis. So Genesis chapter 12, God promises, I'm going to bless the world. He says, I'm going to make you a nation, but all the families on earth will be blessed. And then Ezekiel, you look at the prophets, Ezekiel 39. Um, I won't hide my face anymore from them. Pour out my spirit on the house of Israel. Zechariah 12. God's going to pour his spirit on the Jewish people in a way that they're going to be like, oh, man, what has happened? What have we done? And they're going to they're going to look at the one they have they have pierced very vivid. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 44, pour out water on the thirsty land, streams on the dry ground. And then you come to Joel and moving right on to the New Testament. You've got John uh, where Jesus says, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. I mean, that is so vivid. He's going to mm -hmm. teach you all things because Jesus would be leaving them. Then uh, John 20, Jesus breathes on the disciples and says, receive the Holy Spirit. Wow. There's some kind of experience even before Pentecost. Where, um, and then you have uh, you have Acts itself. So, and, and then we have a whole set of Jewish interpretations too. So. Um, I, I don't think you can come to a word like Ruach in, in the Hebrew Bible and just, oh, that's the wind of God or that's the force of God. Uh, it's something much stronger than that. I think, I think we might be talking later too about Messiah and spirit, but, um, that's just, uh, special. We'll be right back. Shalom, I'm Mitch Glazer, president of Chosen People Ministries. When God wants to use us, he does so in his perfect timing, regardless of where we are in life, in many ways actually, that we had never planned. 
If you've been on a path toward higher education in ministry, communications, and outreach, and you have a passion for making Jesus known to the Jewish people, then the Charles L. Feinberg Messianic Jewish Center is for you. This program is a partnership between Chosen People Ministries, Biola University, and the Talbot School of Theology. It is theologically and specifically designed to inspire, equip, and send students into the harvest on a mission to reach Jewish people for Jesus. Learn more about the Feinberg Center when you visit Chosen People Ministries at chosenpeople.com slash radio. Shalom. As the year draws to a close and the Advent season approaches, many of us will reflect on the Messiah's first coming and celebrate His birth. This year, experience Advent in a whole new way when you attend our free online conference, Advent Through Jewish Eyes. We will hear from three Jewish believers in Jesus on what the Hebrew Scriptures say about the Messiah's coming. Our speakers are Moody Bible Institute Professor Dr. Michael Rydelnik, President of Chosen People Ministries Dr. Mitch Glazer, and radio host Dr. Michael Brown. This free event is on Thursday, December 9th, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Register at chosenpeople.com slash advent today. And now, back to our program. Um, one thing I love about these verses in Joel is that they remind me of Romans 2.11, which says that there is no partiality with God. Um, these verses in Joel emphasize that everyone, um, no matter what their age, their gender, or their role in society, young, old, men, women, um, everybody receives God's spirit. Why is the universal aspect of this prophecy so crucial? Well, I, I think that's something really special about Judaism and Christianity or Messianic faith. Um, New Testament New Testament belief is that uh, universal. Now, now, when it says, "I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh," I think what I think what those words mean. It's not that just like, "Hey, everyone's just gonna, you know, do a certain thing." Or it, it means that this outpouring is available for everyone. Now, that's very special. For instance, in the Roman world, a third or a fourth of all people were slaves. Can you imagine? I mean, you didn't have, you, you would just have really limited rights where you could go, who you were, and they're included. Then you have the whole, you have the gender where men and women are equal at the foot of the cross when we come to Jesus, we're co-heirs. Uh, and that was, uh, that's, that's a, a real trendsetter. You know, the, uh, the, the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, there are these four uh, ladies in, in the genealogy of the Messiah. You know, I mean, these are really unusual things for, for, that, for that time. And then you have, of course, no age gap for a young person or an old person. This outpouring that God promises is available for all. You know, I'm, I'm married to a lovely Jewish person. And uh, we were watching something about Ruth today. You know, Ruth, she was from Moab, was an enemy state. And, you know, I, as a non-Jew, I wasn't an enemy of the Jewish people, but I got included in this thing. Because if you look at the prophecies in, 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 um, in the Tanakh, in the Hebrew Bible, it's really for Israel, but God has extended these promises to reach the world. That's really cool. Amen. We get to be grafted into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Randall, as, as I listen to Nicole reading the scripture, you know, you can't help but see that one of the main themes, and really in the whole book of Joel, is the day of the Lord. The, the term appears specifically in verse 31, the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Um, what exactly is the day of the Lord? It's a little intimidating because <laughs> it's like, sure. if all this is going to happen, do we really want this to be the day of the Lord? <laughs> but, right. but I think it, I know it speaks into something hopeful. So talk to us about that. Yeah, sure. Um, 
Well, the day of the Lord is prefigured in a couple of really terrible things that happen. Um, so you had like the, the Babylonian exile of Jewish people, 586 mm-hmm. BC. That was uh, that was a day of the Lord, destruction of Babylon later, of Egypt. These are, you know, so you have this prefiguring. Now, what we're looking at is with celestial signs, you know, when the sun and moon are changing, you know, that's not just like, that's like the day of the Lord. We're talking about the end of time, mm-hmm. right. the end of things as, as they exist today. Now there are tough things coming and, and uh, you know, uh, one of the things that will happen is that Israel will go through trauma and the world will go through trauma. So we're expecting future events, a great tribulation, but out of that, for Israel come these 144,000 witnesses, I think, like a literal fulfillment mentioned in, in Revelation. Um, and then Jesus says, you know, there's this, this uh, discussion, really, he's, he's speaking in uh, Matthew 24, and he says, wow, there's going to be wars, and there's famines, and earthquakes, and people are going to betray each other. It's just like, I mean, it, it sounds terrible. And then mm-hmm. in the middle of this, in uh, uh, Matthew 24, 13, but the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. So this is his word to us. Hey, all this is coming. But what he's been saying all along to us as believers is let's be ready. Let's stay on the alert. Let's be like, I don't know, what is it? Code orange, you know, <laughs> let's not just be yeah. sitting around and just, you know, hanging out. But, but if you stick it out and stay with me and walk with me, then um, you'll you'll be you know will ultimately be with him in paradise. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think faith in Messiah is really what will sustain us when the time comes for the day of the Lord. Now, Randall, we we mentioned earlier that this season is about messianic prophecy, and as we read this yeah. passage from Joel, some of our listeners may notice that the word Messiah does not appear in these verses. <laughs> So how can okay. we say that this passage is messianic? What does it tell us about the Messiah? Well, you know how we talked earlier about the spirit, you know, and the spirit here, you start with Abraham and then you go to Ezekiel. So it's the same kind of thing. Um, when you come to the work of the spirit in, in the Tanakh, in the Hebrew Bible, um, you really see this connection all the time with the Messiah. Um, Now, the most vivid connection is probably Isaiah 11. Now, Isaiah 11, it starts out, um, this uh, this root will come up from the stump of Jesse, and and it's the Messiah, and he's going to be led by the Holy Spirit, and he's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and he himself will move in the Spirit. By the way, that's uh, the three persons of the Trinity there where you have God, the Father, the Lord, and then you have the Messiah, and then you have the Spirit, so Isaiah 11. And then another sense of Messiah and the Spirit is how how when something happens to Israel that Israel doesn't deserve, okay? Same as us. Like, have you ever felt as a believer, wow, I just, I just didn't deserve that, you know? But God still did it. So when something happens, on what basis can God do that? Because Israel hasn't been faithful, like the restoration of Jewish people to the land of Israel today. Like, well, how can you justify that with these socialists that came back and started a government and everything? And and really, it's based on the work of the Lord Jesus as kind of the super Israel. Israel doesn't obey. We don't obey the Lord, but he obeyed. He, in in his complete service, um, he fulfilled it. So he's like the super Israel, the servant, Mm -hmm. Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. So when we read this scripture in Joel, um, and and you kind of alluded to this before, you can't help but think about Acts 2. Um, And Peter references this chapter in Acts 2. You know, when the early believers received the Holy Spirit, 
and they were able to speak languages they had not learned, right? Everyone thought they were drunk and mm -hmm. it was nine in the morning. <laughs> and, right. and so does that mean that this specific prophecy has already been fulfilled? Well, um, I think the, the beginning of Acts chapter two was something, uh, uh, the, the, the fulfillment in Pentecost that we read about in Acts chapter two is something very special. It's described there as an outpouring, which is uh, uh, Daryl Bach has this commentary and he, he said he liked the Greek uh, definition, a torrential downpour on a parched earth. Mm. I, I don't really picture guys in suits standing up and just kind of like each one in a staid position, kind of like uh, preaching, but they're in a different language. I picture mm -hmm. something super like tactile, something totally experiential. These people were unified. They're in this big group. They're meeting together. They're probably fasting and they're there. They're intensively praying. And then boom, there's this uh, a visual thing where the Holy Spirit comes as tongues of fire. And mm -hmm. then, you know, when, when outsiders are starting to see this and experience and hear what's going on, uh, they say, oh, hey, these, these guys are drunk. This is really experiential. Now, I think that's important for us when you talk about has this been fulfilled? I think this was a, a fulfillment in the sense that God's opened the kingdom and the whole thing is available now. Remember how we mm. talked about different groups? Man, it doesn't matter what your background is. It's just like, hey, this is there and there's more. When I look at my life, I say, I need, I need more of that. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you need experience in your life. When, when I was a kid, I, I was a kid in college, uh, had come from this uh, Christian, Christian uh, background, kind of religious Christian background, selfish kid. I got to college and it was really the experiencing God through the Holy Spirit that changed me and made mm -hmm. me want to live for him and do more for him and, and get involved with Israel. That was all a result of, 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 of getting in. Mm -hmm. so. Wow. Speaking of Israel, um, I know that we see in Acts 2, like the beginnings of the early church in Israel. And mm -hmm. because of the way Israel is today, a lot of Christians may think, or believers in general may think that God has somehow forgotten Israel or that Israel's done with, but we know that there's definitely more in store for this land and for this people. So what does this passage in Joel tell us about the future of Israel and the rest of the world? Well, we, we, we kind of touched on it. It's a great question. Israel is an amazing nation. Nobody can deny that. You, you watch Israel in the news. They say that Israel's the most talked about place. You know, the biggest media groups are here and in, in uh, like Washington and Moscow. I mean, it's a tiny country and all this technology and the Iron Dome and all these cool things. How did all that happen? Well, God has a plan for Israel. The plan is, is, is great. He's going to bring Jewish people back from all the nations. And he's had a, a wonderful start on that. We had, uh, you know, absorbed a million Russian speaking immigrants in the last 20 years or so, 25 years, maybe. And um, but there, there are wonderful promises in Scripture that God is going to have. There's going to be another outpouring where Jewish people come to the Lord in mass. And that's going to be some kind of like uh, uh, awful pressure and prophecy speaks about a remnant. The remnant will be saved. And uh, mm -hmm. Paul speaks about that Romans nine. So might be after some terrible war. And, but we know that these uh, promises will be fulfilled for Jewish people, but the, there's also going to be great distress and um, um, mm -hmm. a tribulation time. And the ones that uh, turn to the Lord, they will be saved, just like Jesus promised. Uh, I think an another thing also, when you look at the fig tree, 
Jesus talks about the fig tree. The fig tree is the last tree to come out. You have all these trees, and Jesus says, Do you see the fig tree and all the trees? That you know that summer is near. I believe he was talking about Israel. Israel is a sign of the end. How do we know? People say, Well, yeah, we had people said Napoleon was the Antichrist. We've had bad wars, but how do you really know? We know that we're near the end because Israel is back in her place. And all those mm. prophecies that are spoken in the Old Testament and Jesus' own words about the restoration of Jewish people, salvation of the Jewish people, those are soon going to come to pass too. And Randall, you live in Israel. You live there with your family. As you walk around those places you mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, you know your favorite places to kind of reach people, as you walk around and you have interactions and as you meet other, or as you meet uh, Israelis who have um, come to faith, how, you know, when you think about this, this passage, how does this passage give us hope for Israel today? And how does it, what, what hope do you have when you meet these people? What hope do you have as you have these conversations? And bring us into that. What hope can we have for Israel today? Well, I, uh... I really, I really want to thank you because people that listen to this are going to pray for Israel and they're going to pray for Jewish people and they're going to pray that Jewish people will be protected. You know, if the nation's wiped off the face of the map, like uh, some of our enemies would do right away if they could, then how do you have these things fulfilled? So um, as you go around today, what's awesome What's really awesome is to start a conversation with someone, a cab driver, a person in a restaurant, a coffee shop, or, or a vendor in the, in the shuk, the, the mm. Jewish open market. And they're just like into it. They're like, yeah, this is interesting for me. I'm glad we're talking about this. It shows yeah. there's an outpouring of the spirit that we're on the edge of something. And it's mm. not just Jewish people. It's also, it's also Arabs. And non-Jews that we meet in like the street outreach, we're meeting non-Jews, people from Africa and other backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, we've had awesome talks with uh, Muslims mm -hmm. uh, about the Lord. And then you have people receiving Jesus. So saying, I want to wow. go on with God and, and follow the Lord. So these, these are great times we're living in. In Israel, it's strategic times. And I think where you are too, we're our listeners start today. It's a strategic time. This is an mm -hmm. awesome time to be living and a wonderful time to be walking with God and be a, a part of his end time outpouring. Randall, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Randall. Yeah, it was awesome being with you. Thank you all so much. The book of Joel might not be your first choice for a Bible study, but as we discussed today, the prophet Joel said some amazing things about how God will pour out his spirit through Jesus, the Messiah. The book of Joel is short, but it's powerful. So we encourage you to read through it sometime this week and discover its full message of hope. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Our Hope. This episode featured Chosen People Ministry staff member, Randall. It was produced by Nicole Vaca, Grace Swee, written by Rachel Larson, and edited by Grace Swee. This episode was also made thanks to Dr. Mitch Glazer, Kyron Bautista, and Dr. Michael Rodelnik. I'm Abe Vasquez. Until next time. Thanks for listening to Our Hope. If you like our show and want to know more, check out OurHopePodcast.com or ChosenPeople.com. You can also support our podcast by giving today at OurHopePodcast.com support. See you next time 